In the first reading today, St. Paul tells us that we are not to receive the grace of God in vain, and then tells us that this is the day of salvation. And so we look at what he's talking about, and he talks about how all these difficulties have befallen them. In other words, you know, we look at it and he says, okay, and afflictions, hardships, constraints, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, vigils, fasts, and so on. And he said, in all of this, this is where their actions and their words have to give praise to God and give that, that reflect the, 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 the truth of God. And so that's the grace that's given to each one of us in the circumstances in which we are now living. Obviously, we're living in some really, really, really bad times, and things are getting worse. I don't know if you noticed, but on Tuesday of last week, for whatever reason, things just took a nosedive. It was horrible. The oppression was so obvious. And, of course, it hasn't really let up, but the importance of understanding that is in that situation, we have to act with greater virtue because you can feel the weight on you. You can, you can feel the oppression from what's going on around you. And so if we're going to be able to do what we want to do, and this is what God's giving us the grace to do, is to become saints in the midst of all of this. Therefore, we need more patience. We need more charity. We need more humility. We need more meekness. We need all these virtues. And that's exactly what we have the opportunity to be able to do, to be able to try to practice these things in a more difficult situation. Now, in our humanness, we look at it and we get frustrated because it's more difficult. You're not going to get any stronger by not having to practice the virtue. In other words, if you want to be able to run a marathon, you're not going to be able to do that by watching people on TV run a marathon. You actually need to go out and start running. And initially, yeah, maybe you can only go a half a block. But you build that up and you have to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. God wants us to grow in virtue. The only way is to practice it. So he's going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Yeah, but we have to do our part to cooperate. It's not enough to be able to say, I want to be more charitable or I want to be more humble or I want to be more meek. We need to do it. We need to work at it. And he's giving us this glorious opportunity because of the circumstances in which we live right now. So what a great opportunity to be the light in the world. What a great opportunity to be able to bring Christ into the world. You don't have to say a word. You have to live it and people are going to see it. Again, as we've talked about so many times, the dichotomy at this point is so blatantly obvious that if you're going to try to live a good life, you're going to be so different from what is going on in the world that people cannot miss it. Everyone is going to recognize it. But it's not simply about trying to do that. It's about loving God and loving neighbor. That's why we want to grow in virtue. Yeah, we don't want to be angry and we don't want to be impatient and we don't want to be proud and so on. But we need to be doing the right thing for the right reason. So first of all, to recognize the situation that God has put us in. And rather than whining and complaining, which I know we're from Minnesota, so we whine and complain about everything, but rather than doing that, look at it as an opportunity for growth. Look at it as an opportunity to really be able to develop our spiritual life because it's difficult. 
So yeah, we can complain because of the difficulty, or we can rise to the occasion, and with the grace of God, we can grow and we can be the saints that God is calling us to be. So when St. Paul says, don't receive the grace of God in vain, he's giving us the grace to be able to act in virtue, to be able to grow in holiness. So this is, as St. Paul said, the acceptable time. This is the day of salvation. That's what we need to recognize. Yeah, we can look forward to the day when all the garbage is going to stop and things, you know, God is going to finally intervene and clean house. But you know what? If we're not saints when that day comes, we're going to get clean too. God's trying to make us saints, so when that day comes, we're going to be able to stand fast. We're going to be okay. But not if we don't cooperate now. So the grace is being given now. The circumstances that are happening in our lives are what are precisely prepared by God to help us to grow. Yes, they are unjust. Yes, they are corrupt. Yes, they are horrible. Yes, they are painful. Whatever you want to say. Acknowledge that. But don't get caught in it. Rise above it. The grace of God is there for us to do that. So that's what St. Paul is getting at. Again, he's not talking out of school here because he's saying, look, he's, he's in the midst of afflictions and hardships and constraints and so on. So he's telling us from his own experience in a situation similar to ours in some ways that this is what we can do. So here we have somebody who suffered for the faith. We have somebody who was able to take all of these things that happened to him and made him a great saint. God wants you to be a great saint. He's giving you the opportunity. He is calling. He is giving you the grace. So if this is the acceptable time, this is the day of salvation, and it is, then let's go back to the line before it and apply it very clearly to ourselves. Do not receive the grace of God in vain.